Hey, what's up people? Welcome back to the Esoteric Coaching Channel. My name is Kayvon and this is the first video in a series of videos that's going to be documenting my progress as I give up weed for 90 days. Now, if you're subbed to my channel, you probably already know that I have a couple other popular videos detailing my journey. So now you're probably wondering why I would be making another video. Well, to be honest, I failed. I failed twice. The first time I was able to go 56 days. Then on a boys trip, I ended up hitting a wax pen and it went all downhill from there. For the next 60 days or so, I started smoking more than I ever had. One day a friend suggested to me that I should quit because he could tell it was affecting my social life. That very same day, I put down the bud, started documenting my journey, and I was able to go another 81 days until I failed again. I failed because of a very stressful situation. Now, it's not important why I failed. The important part is, is that I did fail. But here we are again, another 60 days later, and I'm ready to give it another go. So if you're ready to hear about my experience, learn some tips, and overall, just see a really cool video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's go. back people do me a favor if you haven't hit that thumbs up button do it so now it helps the video be seen by more people and helps my small channel grow thank you so much all right let's get to the good stuff so this is my third time documenting my process quitting weed and I didn't want to do what I did in my last video so I wanted to do something different you know in the last one I just released it was a video diary where I did something like this every single day you can actually click the eye on the corner if you want to check that out I also don't want to do what I did in my first video, which is just go on my patio and spitball something out. Even though it turned out pretty good, I kind of want this one to have more of a structure. So what do I do? So what I did is I took out my notepad in my phone and every day I've been journaling how I feel and what experience I've been going through in this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read that for you guys, tell you guys how those days have been, you know, paraphrase it. And then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna give you three tips on how to quit weed for the first two weeks. Cause I know that that's the hardest part for most people. Once you're able to get over that little hump, the rest of that just takes a little bit of willpower and dedication. So without further ado, let's do it. Day one, felt depressed and felt like I had a hangover. I was looking for an out. I was even looking for hard drugs like Xanax to help me knock out. I ended up not getting any, so that's good. But I found that laughing and reading were two things that helped distract my mind from wanting to smoke. Day two, I actually didn't think about weed at all. It's weird because day one and day two were very similar where I had very busy days, but in day two, I had no thought coming up. It was the first day of the 90 day challenge that I also have a bet going on with my friends. So I felt a little bit more motivated and inspired to quit because I wanted to win the bet first of all, but I also wanted to inspire myself and other people on YouTube that they could do it as well. So I had that motivating driving factor. Day three, so it's weird. I haven't had any dreams yet. And usually when I get this far along, it's not very far, but I get to this day in the process, my dreams are already coming back vividly. So I thought that was kind of weird how this time that wasn't happening. Um, I had a few headaches during the day. I wasn't feeling that best. And I've noticed that my hunger wasn't really there. I just didn't want to eat as much as I did before. And besides that, I felt pretty good. Day four. I'm having trouble sleeping, but besides that, I noticed that my productivity and everything else and energy levels are increasing, so that's good. Day five, I woke up sweating and my piss smell, which I thought was kind of weird. So I went and took a shower, and in the shower, I started getting cravings. And instead of focusing on those cravings, I decided to ask myself why they were there. Um, you know, the answers I came up with was what I was bored, but really, I wasn't bored. I was showering and had things to do, so I thought that was kind of weird. And the other answer I came up with was I was trying to avoid working. I was trying to avoid hard work, which is not good, right? Um, later on that night, I had a not so great jujitsu session. I had an even bigger craving. I ended up having to call a friend to help me get me through it. And after the call, I ended up going back to my YouTube channel and watching my own YouTube videos to motivate me to keep stopping. Day six, I had my first dream that I could remember. It was a wet dream, but it was a dream. Um, I remember in the dream that I was in a car and I looked on the ground and I found a bunch of bags of drugs and a bunch of weed. And I remember saying to myself, I'm gonna no weed challenge. I can't do that. So that's pretty good. Later on that day, I went out with a couple of friends, had a couple of drinks, and when I got home, 
I wanted to smoke so I could sleep, but it's weird. I fell asleep just fine. So my mind was just trying to find an excuse to smoke. Day seven, I was dreaming, but they weren't vivid, but I'm not sure if drinking is the blame. Day eight, the dreams are coming back. It's funny because in my dream, I was actually hanging with my favorite YouTubers and they're telling me that they really dig my style and how I came up. So maybe that's a prediction for the future. Besides that, I had no cravings and overall was just feeling good. Day nine, the dreams are still slowly coming back. It's weird because last time they're a lot more vivid. Now, I think because this is my third time quitting in the, like less than a year, that my body already caught up on a lot of its REM sleep. And I think that as the days go on, my dreams will become more vivid and intense. And intense meaning that I can remember them. Now, I was snowboarding that day and on a chairlift, this guy, kept talking about weed, kept talking about how he wanted to smoke it, about how he loved it. And I remember that it just didn't bother me at all and it didn't trigger any cravings or anything like that. So I was feeling pretty good about that. Day 10, dreams are definitely becoming more vivid now. Now later on the day, I had a very, very high intense stressful fight with my friend and usually those kind of emotionally stressful situations make me want to smoke, but I had no craving whatsoever and I didn't want to smoke at all, so. Yeah. Day 11, I woke up in a pile of sweat. I wasn't sure if it was TT leaving my system or if I was just hot. I feel like my sleeping has been improving, like I've been able to sleep a little bit better at night. Later on the night after jujitsu, I did crave some weed, but I do think that's because I worked out twice and I was 20 hours fasted and my mind was looking for some type of reward. Day 12, I was really craving smoking something. And I don't mean weed, like I was thinking about vaping and blocking miles and I just wanted to blow out smoke. And I realized that maybe I have an oil fixation. Maybe it's not weed I'm craving, it's just the act of smoking itself, right? Now, my hunger also seemed to normalize as well at this point, which kind of sucks because I was enjoying the easy weight loss. Day 13. I woke up sweating again and my sweat smelled funky, which is really weird because I took a shower right before I went to bed. So there was no reason for me to smell. I'm definitely dreaming more. They're more intense, but I'm not sure. If maybe I'm just remembering more. Um, I also realized during the day, I thought about it some more and I realized that every time I smoke, it's when I'm emotionally stressed out. I'm trying to avoid some type of emotion. I don't want to go through the like you know the cycle, the negativity, the positive. I just don't want the highs, the ups and downs. I've also realized that I want to smoke when I want to avoid work. Like so, when work gets hard, I crave weed, which are two really not good things that I really need to deal with. Lastly, I have to admit that I did smoke some hookah. I did hit a black amount, and that's not good. That's me trying to mitigate the problems by using other things, and that defies the whole purpose of quitting weed in the first place. It's to get healthier. Day 14, I overate the night before. I ate a lot of food, I'm not gonna lie. My stomach was hurting so much. I remember I was taking naps and I was waking up and I just really wanted to smoke to help deal with the pain. To be honest, this was the most I craved weed in the past two weeks. I was just craving it all day long. My stomach hurt all day, it even hurt the next day. So it really sucked, it really, really sucked. And day 15, boom! Now, to be honest, it's actually past day 15. And on day 15, I forgot to journal as much. I do remember I was really excited. I was really pumped up. And I was I just really wanted to share this with you guys because I was happy. I'm in one sixth of the way there. And this is the first video out of six. And I just was really stoked to be able to get there again. I know it's not a big accomplishment, but I think you should take the time to celebrate the small wins. So there we have it. There was a day by day in my first 15 days of not smoking. Hopefully someone out there was able to get some kind of value out of that. So now I wanna move forward to the three tips that I think could help you with your first two weeks of not smoking weed. All right, tip number one, distract yourself. I know it seems obvious, but in the first few days, you're gonna be thinking about it nonstop. I found when I was able to laugh, my mind drifted away from that. When I was learning and reading and spending my time like being like purposeful, I didn't really think about it as well. I know it's a short term solution, but in the first couple days, that's what matters. You're just trying to get the first, get through the hardest part. So if you're able to distract yourself by going out with your friends, like exercising, reading, learning, anything that keeps your mind off thinking about it, I think that's a great short term solution that you should utilize. Tip number two. 
get a support system, build a support system, find a support system. A support system is so powerful. When you're craving something and you have no one to turn to, it usually means you're gonna give in to it. Maybe not if you have strong willpower, but sometimes talking to someone gives you that extra boost of motivation. It strengthens your conviction. It strengthens your willpower. And it also feels good to be able to release those feelings that you have. When you're not feeling good and you're able to talk about it, you don't think about it as much. So you don't wanna just focus on it, you wanna to talk to someone and let it out. Now I realize not everyone gets to have an awesome support system. I'm really blessed to have an awesome system awesome support system, really good group of friends that are there for me whenever I need them. So I wanna be there for you. So I'm gonna leave my Instagram right there. I don't care if you follow me, it's not about that. But if you need someone to talk to, direct message me, send me a message, and I'll get back to you as fast as possible because I wanna be there for you guys. You guys are there for me by watching this video, by hitting that like button, by subscribing. So I'm gonna be there for you. Tip number three, the final tip. Do what I did, create a journal. Now, this isn't just so you can make a YouTube video, although if you want to, you should, because people really seem to like these videos and it really seems to help them out and it feels good to help other people out. But let's get back to the drawing. The reason why I think you should make a journal is because it creates awareness, self-awareness. Now, when you go 15, 30 days, it's really easy to forget why you stopped in the first place once you start feeling good. You need to go, oh, well, I went 30 days, I feel fine, I'm just gonna smoke again. You kind of forget about the depression, you kind of forget about all these things. And you, and you know, when you journal, you're able to see patterns. You're able to recognize triggers. You're able to recognize when you wanna smoke, why you wanna smoke, who you wanna smoke around and the reasons behind it. Maybe you realize that every time you're extremely happy you wanna smoke, or maybe when you're extremely sad, it's different for every person. For me personally, I like to, I get the cravings after I do something like I want accomplishment. Like after I you know, worked out twice and I fast for 20 hours, I want to reward myself. I also crave it anytime I'm feeling emotionally down because I'm looking for an out. So I need to avoid you know, drugs, alcohol, weed, and even food when I'm feeling that way because my mind is not in the right state, I will overdo things. So you just have to journal and it'll give you a better idea of where those cravings are coming from and how you can stop it. And it's also a source of motivation in the future. So when you're not feeling that good or you're like, you forget why you started, you go back and you read your day by days and you see all the progress that you made. And it's really interesting because you'll start to see like when you start to typically dream again, when your hunger dropped off and became normal again, and that'll just, keep inspiring you and motivating you to keep going forward. All right, and that's it. Just one last message I wanna give for the people out there. I just wanna let you know that I don't make these videos for views and I don't lie. I would never lie, my conscience just wouldn't allow that. I would feel really guilty. And when I make videos, yes, I do think about the views, but I, I would never release a video if there wasn't a meaning behind it. So the reason I made these videos was for myself. I just wanted to document my progress. I wanted something to look back on. And you know, once I saw that it was helping other people, I also wanted to show people it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to admit that you have a problem. It's okay to, to you know have a problem that other people don't say is a problem. I understand that we just is not physically addicting. I understand that. But for me, it's mentally addicting. It's been something I've been doing for 16 years. It's a habit that's really, really like ingrained in me. So it's not very easy to stop because I have all these cravings that I don't know where they come from. So I like to make these videos for myself as well. I mean, I, I went and watched these videos again. It motivated me to keep going. So. I just wanted you guys to know I would never lie about this. Now, I wanna thank you if you made it this far. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment below and tell me what, like, what day you're on, what you're going through, and how I can help, because I'd love to be there, be there for you. And if you're not a subscriber, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have more of these updates coming, so you need to subscribe if you wanna see video number two, three, four, five, and six, and also release a lot of other content. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys later. Peace.